And my name is Jake. I am an iOS developer at reactstate.com.au. So people often ask me what's reactstate.com.au and what is RA Group. So I might just the short answer. RA Group is interactional group and reactstate.com.au is one of RA Group website. So I mainly work on reactstate.com.au app. And if you have any question for this ad, don't ask me because the whole iOS team is there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on GitHub, Jibo, and Twitter. So it means I can do some coding. And I have more followers on GitHub than Twitter. It means my coding skill is better than my talking skill. And I have more, follow, like, more likes on Jibo than Facebook. It means my design skill is better than my social skill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Today, I'm, I'm going to talk about Interface Builder. So you, you might notice, actually, this is an iPad holding on my hand, and iPad Pro as well. And I don't know the answer yesterday, by the way. And you can see that actually is an app on iPad. I make all these slides in Interface Builder and run on an iPad Pro. And I steal the icon from that word because they didn't give me an Interface Builder version. And make, I make it up using Sketch and Interface Builder. So you can see that, that were icons there. And you might see this IA logo here. There's a button I can navigate to the next line. So let's do it now. So if I regret, I want to go to previous one. What can I do? I use gesture. I can use gesture to come back to previous one. So that's how we can do Interface Builder uh, presentation. All right, so let's start. So today, we are going to talk about two parts. First thing, we are going to talk about Interface Builder. How can we do design in Interface Builder? May I ask a stupid question? Have you used Interface Builder before? Please raise your hand. Ah, oh, Jesus, so many people. It's better to listen to this talk before you get into Interface Builder. <laughs> <laughs> and the second part is about protocol-oriented programming. So we are going to have a look at that in Swift. So before we dip into Interface Builder, hopefully I get the internet. All right, good. So we, have, we can look, look through one website called Designer News. Uh, Design News actually is like hacker news for designers. You can post your articles, and then we can discuss it. We can upload it, something like that. So let's have a look at the article, what the top news for last year. So the first one is say hello to Designer News 2.0. The second one is we do it up. The third one is layer vote is shutting down. So basically, layer vote was an uh, owner for designer news, and then they do it up, and then they show it to the other. And then we have 2.0 now. So just skip all this designer news story and straight to Adobe Project Commit. So you guys may not know about Adobe. They make Photoshop, Flash, all this software, and they're very famous. But about two to three years ago, some designers, including me, and we move on to Sketch because Sketch is cheaper, it's faster, it's easier to use, and Adobe losing a lot of market now. So they designed to make another prototyping tool to back to the market. So they make Project Commit. So it's available on Adobe website. You can. It's actually on my MacBook, but I don't have time to show you guys. And the second one is Principle. It's a, a prototyping tool to design animations. So Sketch, very famous, and we just move on and keep going. Silver Flow is a Sketch plugin for prototyping transitions. So like Frinto is also another famous prototyping tool. And another one, Pixelate. Google actually spent a lot of money for a prototyping tool called Pixelate. So you think about if you go through all the, all the lists, and they're all talking about prototyping and design. But of course, they're missing two important tools, right? The first one is called Hypercar. <laughs> so we can do prototyping in Hypercar. I hope so. And the second one is Interface Builder. So actually, Interface Builder is a good design tool. And I'm going to show you guys the next jump up to my MacBook. And then we can see how can we do design in Interface Builder. Uh, yeah, so here's my MacBook, and I open Xcode. So by the way, Interface Builder is a part of Xcode. And let's open Xcode and start with a new project. 
So I start a new project and then use single view application. All right, seems okay. So that's called IB Awesome. I got my cheating row as well, if I do something wrong. And all right, so we have a brand new project. I changed the simulator to 6S and run the app first. So we should pump up a simulator. Oh, come on, Xcode, you can do it. Where's my simulator? All right, so we have a simulator. And let's go, to, go ahead to our main storyboard, which is this one. So we have a storyboard, and which has a one single view controller. So let's put up a UI view here. So let's bring up a UI view. Oh, come on. Yeah, so first thing I want to change the color to RA red, which is this one. And I change the size to a, a 128 by 128, like a square. And then I can bring it to, I quickly set up some constraints, all right? So we high, and then I center, center it. So, all right, it is done. So we can ship this app now. One app with one square. Okay, come on, my simulator, all right? So the designer comes, oh, we don't like square. Can we have some color radius? Of course we can, right? So one way we can do is subclass. So we can create a subclass from UI view. And let's do it now. So I call it awesome view, which is from UI view. All right, so we have a subclass now. And I close that. Ah, oh, come on, it's Xcode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, so we have a subclass. And what I, what I can do, I actually should change to page one. And uh, what can I do? Actually, I can define a property called color radius. Hopefully, I spell it right. And then CG float. And then I define this default value is zero. So in this set section, I can do something called lay, uh, layer dot corner radius equals our corner radius property. So how can we set it up? One way we can do is we can do it in awake for nip. So first thing I re need to remember, we can call super awake for nip. Second thing, we just set this corner radius, for example, to 20. All right, let's run the app again and see how it goes. All right, it doesn't work because I'm mixing one important part, which is I need to go to Interface Builder, and then I open up my panel and go to Identity Inspector. I have to connect this view, so I'm selecting this view here, connect this view to Awesome View. Once I connect it, I should be able to see the corner radius on my simulator. All right, so the designer comes, oh, those corner radius looks good, but can I play around by myself? Yes, we can, because Interface Builder provide a good feature. All right, so let's do it now. So I mark, I come back, I close this thing, because I changed the resolution, it's too small now. And I close all the other things, and then I mark this class called, all right, get to the wrong one, I should get to the awesome view one, which is awesome. And go to the IB designable, I mark this class called IB designable. And second thing, I mark this called IB inspectable. All right, I'm going to delete this code now because we are going to change corner radius in Interface Builder. Let's build it and go back to Interface Builder and I open this panel again and you can see Xcode's busy and building stuff. Now, let's go to Attributes Inspector. You can see a new section come up called Awesome View, which has a property called corner radius. So if we change it, like 20, and then we can see, we can actually apply the corner radius on the view. And if we change to 50, for example, and then we can apply 50 on the view. And if, if we change to 64, we can make a circle. So what we do on Interface Builder and what we see on this storyboard. So that's a good thing we can do in Interface Builder now. What we did, just two steps, so simple. One is called IB Designable, mark this class code. IB designable. The second thing is mark this property called IB inspectable. All right, now this, we grab the designer again and see, okay, you can play around by yourself now. The designer might say, all right, 
looks good, Jake, but can I play around corner radius on images, on buttons, on the other controls? Yes, we can. So let's have a look. How can we do it? So I'm going to bring you guys a library called IB Animatable. Uh, I go to our projects folder called IB Awesome, if I remember correctly. And then I'm going to install an a open source library called IB Animatable. And I have a secret profile somewhere, like someone else. I'm telling you, uh, Russia, right? <laughs> so, and then I oh, I copy paste it and then I explain to you guys. Oh, come on. And so there's a platform, this iOS app, and it's more than so over version 9. And also we use frameworks. And the IB Awesome is our app target, so our project name. And for this target, and then we install IB Animatable library. So let's save the file, go ahead and install it. Before we do it, because I'm using RBEMV, and then I have to set up the local. You don't have to do it if you don't use Ah, oh, damn it. And then now, go ahead, we can install the pop. All right, once we install the pop, and then we come back to Xcode, and we can close it. Close this first and close Xcode because we are going to use the workspace instead of the project file. So we open it and then we open Xcode again and let's change the simulator. So you can you guys can make notice there's two projects now. One's called IB Awesome, one's Pops. So in Pops we have <laughs> IB animatable library within the Pops. So let's come back to our IB Awesome project and then we come back to our Storyboard. All right, you can do something for this storyboard now. Ah, building again. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Maybe I press Command B to build quicker. Hopefully. Come on. Show me something. All right. I think interface builder is lazy, but hopefully we can get back. All right, we get back our view. So first thing, I'm going to replace awesome view with our animatable view, which is a component within IB Animatable Library. So once we change it, you can see the model is called IB Animatable, so which is the library we just introduced. And we go back to our attributes inspector. So you can see we, we have a bunch of inspect, inspectable properties now. One is called corner radius, we had before, and we have fill color, predefined color, opacity, border, whatever, whatever. Let's go. Let's have a look, play around them. Okay, I am going to remove that corner radius, and then we can actually put some fill color like this one, my favorite one, purple. And if I, like Jake, I'm not good at picking color, I might actually use some default color like fat color, pumpkin, if I spell it right, and then we can have some pumpkin color. And, <laughs> yeah, so, so there's a bunch of fat color you can choose from, and we can change opacity easily, like, 30% of opacity and 90% of opacity, something like that. I'm going to remove it. And we can also change the border color, like my favorite one again, and then change, change the border width. So we have border here. And we, of course, we can change rotation, and we can do shadow, a lot bunch of them. And I'm not going to go through each single one. You guys can download the project and play around it. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite called mask. So basically, mask. It's a very famous feature in Sketch. You can use mask anyway. And in I interface builder, we can also mask our views. Like we make it like a circle. For example, if I want to make it like a triangle, all right, this time I'm going to make it right. Triangle. And if we want to make a polygon, right, polygon. So if we have 10 sides of polygon, we make a 10 sides polygon. And we want to make a star, we have star. We have six point star, we have make a six point star. Right, I leave it as a star. All right, you can see we can actually easily do UI stuff, user interface stuff in Interface Builder now. So let's go one more step forward. We can actually then do animations. So what can we do? We just specify the animation type in Interface Builder, like a pop. All right, look, pop. All right, let's, let's run the app again and see how it goes. Come on, interface builder. All right, you can see a star popping up. So we can actually specify the animations, like auto run, you don't want to run it, and you want to run it manually. And like 
true or false. And you can actually specify duration or delay. For, for example, I delay one second, and you can have a bunch of physics-based factors like damping, velocity, and force. So you can specify them and customize them a little bit more. And I'm going to change the repeat count to three. So, and let's have a look. We should have a start, delay one second, and pop three times. One, two, three, right? That's easy. So we can also have a bunch of different animations, like shake. Let's shake the star. And three times, delay one second. All right, come on, shake, shake, shake. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. You can actually have more than that, so you can actually bring, bring something slicing from left, for example, and then we can see a star coming from here. <laughs> come on, right? <laughs> That's so easy. So we can do a lot in Interface Builder, not only interface, UI interface, and then we, or user interface, and we can also do animation. But it's not that's it. We are going to move one more step forward. So most of apps, we have multiple screens, like more than one view controller. Let's bring up another view controller. All right, I feel like interface are the builder. Oh, my map is so small now because I can't see most of that <laughs> space. And I'm bringing a second one. So first thing, I bring another view controller here. <coughs> you can see the first one and second one. Oh, I might bring close this one. OK, so make it easier to see. And the first thing I'm going to do is connect the view to be animatable view. All right, once I do it, I'm going to show you guys one feature called gradient color. So with IB animatable, I'm not good at picking colors, right? So, but I'm good at yeah, choosing default, de pretty divine colors, like upper. So once I put this parameter into gradient color, I got one gradient color like this. Nice one, but not on this projector. Uh, and we have about 200 different gradient colors we can choose from. So the second thing I'm going to show you guys is how can we navigate from the first view controller to the second one. So let's bring up a button, UI button. All right, bring up a button, and then I'm going to make it bigger. Oh, first thing I should do is go to Identity Inspector and change to Animatable button. Then I have a bunch of properties I can choose from. Like for example, I choose the color, and then change the text color to white, make it more visible. And then I make it even bigger. I like big buttons. Your know, button should have border. And that's one thought I learned from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I quickly set up all these constraints, and then I all right. I'm not going to talk more detail about. Octo layout because it's so horrible. I don't hor I don't want to horrify you. <laughs> <laughs> and but we already set up all these constraints. So we have a button here. So what can we actually navigate from the first view controller to the second one? It's easy, right? We can actually drag and drop. So we just right click on this button or control click, and then we just release our mouse on the second view controller. And then we have a bunch of second ways. Without IB animatable library, we have about five second ways provided by Apple. But now we have a bunch of different second ways. They can define different transition animations. So one of my favorite, might be Russell's favorite, is exposed. <laughs> so let's have a look. Once I do it, one more step, I have to go to Attributes Inspector, and then click on the model. Otherwise, my app will crash because there's a bug of Interface Builder. I know Interface Builder well. I know the bugs. <laughs> and then let's run the app again and see how this transition looks like. Ah, oh, come on. All right, so we click on the button, and then we have explosion <laughs> effort for free from Interface Builder. The better thing we can do is we have actual human natural sound from Jake. <laughs> Not like crappy ACC file. <laughs> yeah, all right. So we come up with a problem now. How can we come back? Come back. I, I want to go back to the first one. What can we do? Well, I got you covered, don't worry. So we copy this button here from the first one. Copy. Yeah, copy, paste is a part of my life. 
I'm pacing. I feel my screen's too small. Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. And okay, I quickly set up the constraints center center. And then we select the button, so control click or right click, and then go to, oh, I can't see it. Sorry, guys, I make it. All right, you can see that's exit, second way. And then we can choose some exit, second way, like unwind to view controller. So they, <laughs> those second way provided by IB and the Metable library as well. So let's run the app again and see how it goes. Oh, come on, every time I wait for this, I just. <laughs> All right, let's go to next one, expose. All right, let's show some. And then we can come back, just press this button. All right, let's play around it, and then we have other transitions, actually. I have one of my favorite called portal. So let's have a look, portal. And then, and let's run the app again and see how it goes. All right, so you can see we can open the door and close the door. Open the door again. <laughs> and close the door again. Man, it's so boring. So if, if, if we can actually use pinch gesture to close the door, it's a good, it's a lecture. Actually, we can do it in, in the face builder. You can see I have a pinch gesture here. I can close the door, uh, open the door. Uh, I think it's very laggy on my simulator, but if you try it on your phone, it's much, much natural and very, very good effort. You can actually use interactions in your transition. So, you already seen, we can do user interfaces, you can, we, we can do animations, we can do transition, we can do transition animation and even gestures. All right, or almost anything we can do. I'm going to show you guys one app, the demo app we did for our project. So here's a demo app, it's a to-do app. So we did this app in Interface Builder without writing one single line of code. I'm gonna show you the horrible, in, ah, come on, storyboard. We did it in one storyboard. I know how can we use storyboard reference, but I don't want to do it. I want to show you guys, we can do one app in storyboard only, which is this app. So I'm gonna show you guys, here it is the to-do app, and then the to-do app has a sign screen, and we can actually have create an account, we have nice animations, nice scene, and we can have like, that, uh, what's that called? Walkthrough or onboarding screen, and we have all the features, they are all working actually, but I'm not going to show you guys each single one. It's like this one, this, you can check box it, and then you can actually add new one here. Anything that's interactive, and actually is an app. So once we plug in, for example, we plug in our data model using like a Firebase, whatever, iCloud stuff, and then we can actually ship this app to App Store. That's the topic. We can design our app and ship it to App Store. All right, so let's move on. I think I have enough interface builder now. <laughs> you guys always seen interface builder actually is a good design too. And with, ah, oh, come on. With IB Animatable, Interface Builder is a great, awesome, amazing, fabulous, fantastic design tool. That's all the English, all the positive words I know in English. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I pronounce them correctly. I hope. Finger crossed, anyway. Uh, <laughs> let's move on. Ah, enough Interface Builder. Have a look. Protocol oriented programming. My English is not very good, right? I call it pop. So, next come out scenario. We already seen how can we do corner radius for a view. So, by the way, this is my son. Yeah, he's a handsome boy. <laughs> Same as his father. <laughs> if you haven't taken a photo for me, you, you can do it now. Cheers. <laughs> With my son as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Move on, move on. Uh, so, so can, how can we implement for image view? How can we implement for a button? Yeah, it's easy, right? So the first, first thing come up on, my, on top of my head, we can copy paste them, right? Copy pasting is a part of my life from Stack Overflow, by the way. <laughs> uh, a few days ago, we discussed the IEA, and it's good to be a, a Windows developer or good to be a 
Mac developer. My point is the layout, the keyboard layout for Mac or for Windows, they're slightly different. The control or command key, they're different. So when you, it's which developer, so which keyboard can help us to do more copy pasting, it's good for the developer. <laughs> All right, so the Linux developer might laugh at us because they can actually use VI and they can do Y, Y, and P. I'm going to show you guys later, but anyway, we just move on. So I can, I can see the code smells there. Okay, I can smell the code smell, actually. And because now we have pop, so we can do it better. So how can we do it better? Let's have a look how can we implement in a protocol-oriented programming pattern. And we can define a, a protocol called corner rate or corner desirable, which has one single property called corner radius. And then we can provide a default implementation why a protocol or a protocol extension, which is which has a method called configure corner radius. You can see protocol extension can provide default implementation to the protocol. We can't do it before in Objective C, then, but now we can do it for Swift. And also, the, another powerful thing I can think of is protocol extension can apply to, I'm not going to jump anymore, to scopes. So you can actually limit this protocol extension method only run for UI view. So you, for example, for iOS or tvOS, you can actually run this protocol extension. But in the future, if you want to implement for the other platforms like Mac, we can actually provide another protocol extension for NSView. And in the future, I don't know how long, if we can do something for Android, we can provide another protocol extension for Android View. So let's have a look with our new approach using POP, and then how can we improve our original implementation. Here is our new implementation. So all those UI elements, they all confirm to corner, corner designable protocol, and they have to override this property, which is corner radius, and then we have to de de assign a default value for that, so which is zero. Then we can call the protocol extension method called config corner radius, which is in our previous slide. You can see here. So here is our, oh, come on, my gesture. My gesture is not very good. All right, so here is our default implementation for iOS. And you can see it's pretty straightforward, just setting up the baking layer corner radius. The thing about in the future, if you want to change the implementation for that, what can we do? We can, what we have to do is only change this bit, not anywhere, like three places. For example, we want to have a corner radius that which is uh, at least half of the view. We can actually do the implementation in the protocol extension method instead of copy pasting anywhere. So which is a good approach we can use. And think about most of the UI logic, we can actually do it in protocol-oriented programming way. So let's have a look how IB, the animatable library, provides. So we already see the corner rated, uh, corner designable, and you might see in the field designable, we can apply different colors. You, can, you might see the gradient designable, you can apply different, over 200 different gradient colors border, shadow, and notation. You don't have to tilt your head to actually check your design anymore. So you might see in the mask. And let's have a look at those two images. So nowadays, most of apps, they have a lot of images. And sometimes you want to put, all right, that's very effort, it's very bad on the projector. So mo most of the time, you want to present some text on top of images. What can we do? There's a couple of ways we can do it. One is we can apply some tint color. And the other way, after iOS 7 and Apple actually use a lot blur effort, so we can easily configure tint color or blur effort in interface builder. And very straightforward. So let's move on to the bottom right. So there's two box text boxes. So if you have some colleagues they work on web, they might laugh at us, okay how easy they can do uh, an icon with in a text box, how easy they can actually change the placeholder color. And it's very hard in I iOS. But now with IB animatable library, we can easily do them with in, in the face builder only. Uh, and the last one I'm going to, actually we can laugh back to the web developer now because we have animatable protocol. So there's the most important protocol 
uh, in the library, we can provide more than 50 different animations uh, within the protocol, so you can extend it, use it in any way. So let's think about next time if we want to implement a custom UI element, what can we do? So better to grab your purple, or better to actually change to ARMO. And if you're lucky enough, <laughs> you can get some Pokemon like yeah. Tony. <laughs> and then you think about which protocol do you want, and you throw out your purple, and then you grab Tony. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> let's have a look at practical example. How can we do that? Okay, come back to my Mac again. Let's come back to our Xcode. Oh, okay. Before I do it, I'm going to install another library called Material. So I'm doing copy pasting. I just proved myself as a copy pasting programmer. Y Y and P. And then I copy this line and delete it. And then I go Material. And then I save it and install the pop again. So once we do it, we come back to our interface builder, uh, our Xcode, we can see we have two pops. One is IP animatable, one is material. So what material does, you might notice, um, material design is a language from Google. They use it in Android and web. So I'm going to show you guys. I bring one material design button here and then show you guys what it looks like. So I'm going to bring a button here. First thing, I'm going to connect it to raised button. Then I have a bunch of inspectable properties. So I can change the color to IA red, for example. Oh, come on. It doesn't work well. Always OK. It just has some delay. Uh, change the text color to white and make it more visible. Now I make it bigger, because I'm going to have something to show you guys. So I quickly set up the constraints and Center it, vertical spacing. All right, so we just update the frame. Then I run the app again and see how it goes. Do, do, do. Oh, come on. Finally, we can see the button. If I press on the button, so you can see a repo effort. It's a material design component called repo effort. So the designer comes and says, OK, this is very good. I like it. But can you have something like a popping or shaking like the star has? Yes, we can, right? So <laughs> let's have a look. How can we do it? OK, so let's create a new subclass from, uh, I'm going to create a new button called animatable raised button, which is a subclass of raised button. All right, come on. Yeah, I'm going to close this. And then first thing, I'm going to mark this class called, oh, first thing, I need to import material library and also import IP animatable library. And next thing, I'm going to mark it IP desirable. So you can see raised button is a part of material button, and material button is a, part, uh, it's a subclass of UI button. All right, it's too hard to say this. Uh, all right, so we just change that to to our new subclass to our identity <coughs> inspector. You can see this one, and I remove model because now it's in our new internal target. So we should have a same effort because we haven't done any customization yet. So same effort. So if we want to add animatable or animations, what can we do? So make sure I come back to this button. So first thing might be I think of, we have an animatable button you already seen or see it before. Uh, I build it, boom, because Swift doesn't support multiple inheritance, right? So if you have two different UI library, you want to put it together, it's almost impossible before. But if I be animatable, we can do it because we use protocol-oriented programming pattern. So anything is protocol. So we have a protocol called animatable protocol. Now I build again and it's campaign, but it says you haven't actually confirmed to this protocol. So the first thing we just go to this protocol and copy paste in all this property. All right, I'm a copy pasting programmer. 
and I have to. So I'm going to delete all these documentation, nice documentation comment because those documentation comment will deliver to the subclass, so we don't have to do it anymore. I delete them, and I'm going to show you guys how can we override these properties. I'm going to close this panel as well, we make it bigger. And come on. All right, so now we have a bunch of properties, but we still campaign because we haven't override them. So first thing, there's a, that is a, an optional, so we don't need to do anything, just delete it. The second one is auto run, so I'm going to set a default value called true. Uh, you want to run the animation. And the default value for double, I'm going to put NAN and just lock a number. So I'm, call, I'm going to paste all of them and then we can, we should be able to build the project again. So now we override all of those properties. Let's build the project again. So now, yeah, we can build. And one thing I need to apply some default value to those properties, for example, like a, like a velocity force, what can we do? I just override away from lip. And again, just call super away from lip. Then next one I just call configure animatable property. What does this method do? Let's go ahead and go to the implementation of animatable property and then we just search it. So you can see which is a protocol extension method to this protocol called animatable and which apply to UI view. So these ones can only run on iOS or tvOS. And what it does, this method is super simple. So you just apply the default value if we set it to not a number. So because animatable raised button is a, is a subclass of UI button, so UI button is a subclass of UI view, so in our subclass we can actually use this method. So let's come back to our animatable raised button, and the next step I want to go to, I want to actually run the animation. So what can we do? I just run, uh, overwrite UI layout subviews, and then I just call layout subviews, then I call another protocol extension method called auto run animation. Let's have a look what it does. So basically this method is another protocol extension method on animatable property. What it does is say check this flag is auto run true and then we just run the animation based on the config animation type. So easy, right? So let's have a look. Now we should be able to see something. So let's come back to Interface Builder and open our Attributes Inspector. Although we don't see anything, but I did. I want to do it. I just want to show you guys. Sometimes I just forgot. We didn't mark our properties. It's called IB Inspectable. So let's copy those IB Inspectable properties. And then I copy paste and another case proof me a copy paste programmer, right? So <laughs> let's come back to Interface Builder and go back to, you can see we have a new section called animatable raised button. So we have all these inspectable properties now. So we can actually do it like pop and see how it goes. So come on Interface Builder. So we can actually pop him up the button and we also have material design elements there. Oh at first there. So it's how easy we can actually integrate two fully functional UI framework together. It, before I think it's almost impossible to do it. Now we can do it in in a pop way. So let's come back to my slides and uh, so today we talk about interface builder. I hope you guys remember you can do you user interface, animation, transition and interaction in interface builder. And all you do in interface builder, you can bring it to your, your funnel app so you don't waste anything. And then you can pack in your data model and ship it to App Store. And all the top prototypes, they are interactive and dynamic. So it doesn't like the other prototyping tool, they actually generate images and then you just tap, tap, tap. And those things you can interact with them. So the unfortunate, anything comes with pros and cons, right? So this thing only can support Apple platform. So if you are an Android developer, Android designer, so, and, so bad luck, we don't support you. Uh, <laughs> and the second thing I, I hope you guys remember, thinking in pop, because we have years of experience on Objective-C, so anything's OO, but Swift actually is protocol-oriented programming language. So, 
port is very reusable and flexible. You can see we use protocol oriented la programming language to implement a library called IB animatable, which, which is very re reusable and flexible. You can use anywhere, integrate with the other libraries. So protocol extension is very powerful and they can have scopes as well. So you can you can provide different default implementation for different platforms like Android in the future or Mac. So if you like the talk, please check out the project, IB Animatable, that's our project. And if you want to know how can we actually integrate two libraries together, so you can check out the second one, IB Animatable Material. And if you want to know more about Pop or Pokemon or whatever, then check out the third one. If you are a designer, you never used Interface Builder before, and you check out the fourth one, it's a little bit old, but it's still valid. And if you want to know about IB Designable, IB Inspectable, check out the fifth one. And that's the end of my talk. Thanks, guys.